In step 3 of the Sugiyama algorithm, we want to minimize the crossings. So, our input is a graph with a fixed layering, and we want to permute the vertices along the layers such that the number of crossings is minimized. Unfortunately, this problem again is MP-hard, even if we only have two layers, which was shown by Gary and Johnson in 83. And there are hardly any approaches that optimize it over multiple layers. So instead, what we want to do is we want to iteratively reduce the number of crossings. The idea is the following. The number of crossings only depend on the permutations of adjacent layers. So if these two edges, they don't care what happens down here. They only care about the vertices here and here. So what we can do is, first we add dummy vertices for edges that connect far layers, so here at those crossing points, and then we only consider adjacent layers from bottom to top. First the first two, then two and three, then three and four, and so on. And only there we try to reduce the number of crossings. So we minimize the crossings of some layer while keeping the previous layer fixed. We fix everything here and we only change the order on this layer. Then we fix everything we've computed here, we only change it here, and so on. So the algorithm looks like this. We choose some random permutation for the first layer. Then we iteratively consider the adjacent layers and permute the layer Li plus 1 while keeping layer Li fixed. Then we repeat those steps in reverse order. We start from the top and we go downwards. Then we again repeat all of this and we do that until we don't get any more improvements. And then again we start with a different random permutation. So the key part in this algorithm are these two steps. How can we minimize the crossings by permuting one layer and keeping the other fixed? This is the so-called one-sided crossing minimization problem. So the input is a bipartite graph. We have two sets of vertices, L1 and L2, and the edges are all between some vertex of L1 and one on L2. And we have a fixed permutation on L1, so this down here is fixed. But we can permute the second layer, and by that we want to minimize the number of edge crossings. Unfortunately, also this problem is MP-hard. Even if we only have two layers and one side is fixed, it's MP hard to minimize the number of crossings. That's unfortunate. However, there are many algorithms that still get good solutions. There's the barycenter heuristic, there's the median heuristic, there's the greedy switch heuristic, and we can also formulate it as an ILP. There are many more, but these are the four that we want to have a look at in this lecture. Let's start with the barycenter heuristic, which was proposed by Sugiyama et al. So the intuition of this algorithm is, we have few intersections when the vertices are close to their neighbors. So what we want to do is, we want to place every vertex at the barycenter of its neighbors. That we already know from Tut and from Schnuder. So we compute the barycentric coordinate, which is just the coordinate of the neighbors divided by the degree. And here, as the coordinate, we just choose the order that we have on this layer. And vertices that get the same coordinate, those we just offset by some small data, so we move them a little bit away. This has a linear runtime, which only have to look at every neighbor for every vertex, and we get relatively good results. In fact, if we can do it without crossings, then this also gets the optimal solution. But in general, this is only an order of square root of n approximation factor, and this is not very good. And to see that factor, we can have a look at some small example. This part here we will prove in the exercise, but for the worst case, look at this example here. We have here k squared minus 1 vertices, we have here 1 and here k minus 1. Now to you I will connect these k minus 1 and this one here, and to v I will just connect this guy. And now this edge all the way here will pull you to this side on v. So v will lie to the right of you.
That means that all these k minus 1 edges cross this one edge of v. The other hand, if we switch the order, then we only have one crossing. And these are about square root of n vertices. So square root of n crossings. The second heuristic, the median heuristic, was proposed by Eads and Walmart in 1994. Oh, again, we look at the order that's fixed on layer 1. And now instead of choosing the barycenters of the mean, we choose the median. So the x-coordinate of some vertex u is zero if it has no neighbors, or it's the median of all of its neighbors. And again, if two vertices get to the same position, we just offset it a little bit. This again has a linear runtime. It's almost the same algorithm as before. And again, relatively good results. And it's also optimal if no crossings are required. But here, the worst case is much better. Here, we have a 3 approximation factor. I won't prove that we get the 3, but I will show you the worst case. In the worst case, look at this example here. So we have two vertices at the top, and v is connected to the first k, then u to the next k plus 1, then v to the next k plus 1, then u to the last k. So since this is one more than this, and this is one more than this, we will have the order u and v. But that means that all these red edges cross each other, and the red edges here cross the black, and the red edges here cross the black. So we have 2k times k plus 1 plus k squared, k squared from here. On the other hand, if we switch it, then only the black edges cross each other, and then we only have k plus 1 squared. And this is approximately 3k squared plus something. This is k squared plus something. So this is about three times as much. Let's have a look at the greedy switch heuristic. This is very simple to describe. We will just iteratively swap adjacent nodes as long as the number of crossings decreases. And that's it. That's the whole algorithm. You just go through it, and whenever you can switch something to reduce the number of crossings, you do that. This takes order of L2 time per iteration, so we look at all the vertices on layer 2, and we only have that many iterations. And this is usually used as a post-processing for the other heuristics, because it's pretty fast and you can improve things. By definition, it doesn't make it worse. But if we only use it, then it's not that great. So if we look at this example here, we have a bunch of blue edges, a bunch of black edges, and this pink and red. And all the blue cross all the black edges. And there are no local changes that we can make that improve it. So, for example, if we switch these two, then we will get rid of this one pink-blue crossing, but now these two blue edges will cross, so it doesn't improve it. On the other hand, if we completely change this, so we put this vertex all the way to the right, this all the way to the left, then we only have a crossing between the red and the black and blue, and the pink and the black and blue. So here we had about k squared, and here we only have 2k. And now if we choose k as n on both sides, then we get an order of n approximation. And order of n is really, it's not good. Finally, we will have a look at the integer linear program formulation, which was proposed by Junger and Mutzel in 1997. And this uses some pretty cool observations. So what we want to do is, we look at some constants. A constant CHA tells us how many crossings do we get by edges incident to VI and VJ if we put VI to the left of VJ. So in this example here, if VI is to the left of VJ, then we have three crossings. On the other hand, if we switch it, then how many crossings do we still have? We will have the two red and the black will cross so we will have two crossings. So Cij here will be a 3, and Cji will be a 2. And with these constants, we will formulate an integer linear program. So for every pair of vertices, we will have a variable that tells us, does i lie to the left of j? 
And then we can count the number of crossings in total. So the number of crossings of a permutation is, we look at all pairs of vertices, i and j, and if i lies to the left of j, then we have cij crossings, and otherwise we have cji. But to make it a bit simpler, we will always count those cji, and we will remove them if xij is 1. This looks a bit weird, but if we look at this whole function, then we will see that everything here is a constant. So this doesn't matter. When we want to minimize something, we will always have this part. So we can completely focus on this part in the beginning. So our minimizing function looks like this. We sum up over all pairs, take cij minus cji times xij. So if xij is a 1, then we get this many crossings. If it's a 0, then we get nothing for it. We have to make sure that we really get an order here. So we have to add these transitivity constraints. If some vertex i lies to the left of j, and j lies to the left of k, then of course i also has to lie to the left of k. And the same with to the right. And that's the whole program. The nice thing is, we can use some branch and cut techniques for DAGs of limited size, and this is very good if our graphs have only small to medium size. We get an optimal solution from this. But the bad thing is that we cannot guarantee that we get a solution in polynomial time, and if we have large graphs, then this might take many hours or days or weeks or even longer. Let's have a look at one example where we go through the whole algorithm. We have this layer assignment, and we add the dummy vertices, and we go through the layers. We will start here now. We fix the one at the bottom, and then we permute at the top. Now we fix those at the bottom, and we permute those. And we move upwards, and when we're at the top, we start moving downwards again. Then we go upwards, downwards, until we have some assignment in the very end. And now, as long as we keep those dummy vertices and those vertices in this order on every layer, the number of crossings will always be the same. And how to exactly place them based on this order and how to draw the edges, we will do in the final part.